What's up and welcome to my point of view. I am your fat and opinionated host and when it comes to covering true crime cases, it is not uncommon for me or for others to sometimes criticize law enforcement and to criticize investigators about how they're handling certain cases. Now, I try not to be over critical on law enforcement, but I gotta say, I've covered quite a few cases where law enforcement and investigators just completely and utterly dropped the ball. Luckily though, this Idaho 4 case is not one of those cases. I understand some people may have their criticisms, but for me, I feel as if law enforcement took their time they built a solid case, and I think that law enforcement got their guy. I can't really criticize law enforcement for how they went about getting Brian Koberger, and I do think that Brian Koberger is guilty, and I also think that investigators compiled a good bit of evidence to prove that he's guilty. So I have no criticisms of that. But I do have a few criticisms. I have a few issues with how this case has been handled ever since Brian Koberger got arrested. For one, I feel like Koberger's getting kind of special treatment here. And some people will deny that, but you're not going to convince me otherwise. Dude's getting special meals prepared for just him at the jail that he's in. There are no other vegans. There's not even a vegan option. He's having meals prepared specifically for him. Not for the vegan population of this jail. No, for one person, Brian Koberger. He has a TV to himself. He gets to watch his case play out on News Nation and other various news outlets. For all we know, Brian Koberger may be tuning in to my videos. Who knows? But my biggest issue comes with his representation, if you will, his lawyer, his legal defense, who just so happened to also work alongside two of the victim's families. I believe that's a conflict of interest. I know they've tried to explain it away, and some of you all feel differently. In my opinion, that's a conflict of interest. That's a conflict of interest, in my opinion. There are billions upon billions of people in this world, and you want me to sit here and accept that they could not find anyone else to defend Brian Koberger. But see, this is an issue that I have, not just with this case, but with society overall. It's like much of our society they are incapable of holding government officials and they're incapable of holding professionals or whatever you want to call them. They're incapable of holding them to the same standards that we as common people are held. So when it comes to Brian Koberger's legal defense, I fully believe they should have found someone else. I don't care if the excuse is, well, this is the only person in this area qualified to do this, or this is the only person that was registered to do this. No, that doesn't cut it with me. Best believe if there was something, if there was a technicality, if there was an issue on your behalf, there would not be any level of understanding. There wouldn't be no bending of the laws or the rules. There would be no leeway for you. Okay? So we need to hold these people to the same standards, in my opinion. I don't want this, oh, well, she's the only one qualified that could represent Koberger, and she's the only one in the area, in this district, and in Idaho. Cut the crap. There's billions of people on Earth. Fly someone in. I don't give a damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously. Seriously. We got to stop buying into these excuses that we're given. They could bend the rules. They could bend the law. They could do things that aren't necessarily right. They can do whatever they want. But when it comes to you, 
best believe they're going to hold you to a totally different standard. We have to hold these people to the same standards or they're going to keep getting away with all types of stuff. Now, I'm not saying they're getting away with much here, but it starts with cases like this. When we don't hold the government, when we don't hold the judicial system, the criminal justice system, when we're not hold, holding these people to the same standards that we would be held if we were involved in this case, that's a problem for me. But a lot of people will write it off. Well, they said that she's the only one qualified. She's the only one in the district that can do this. F that. I don't want to hear that crap. Do you think you could come to court with an excuse? Um, well, it turns out, you know, I don't really want to be held accountable for this crime because um, I'm the only person in my district. Like, no, your ass is going to jail, buddy. So cut the crap. That's how I roll. People can feel how they want to feel about it. I'm going to feel how I want to feel about it. I don't have no problem with other people feeling differently. But in my world... And I think everyone should feel this way, but hey, I think we got to start holding these people to the same standards. So right off the jump, I have a problem with Koberger's legal defense. I have a problem with that lawyer who represented family members of the deceased victims representing Brian Koberger. And we all know that she did it for notoriety and a bigger paycheck. But things like that, that's allowed to happen. It's okay. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. It's okay when they do it. It's a problem when you do it. I don't like living life that way. But our society has made things this way. There will be people down in the comments below. Well, technically, she didn't do this. And technically, oh, yeah, save the technicalities and stick them right up your behind. I am tired of this double standard when it comes to government officials and regular people. These are just regular people that happen to hold certain jobs, certain positions. Many of them we elected. And then they get to act like they're some type of gods and they can do things that we can't do. No. That's why we have a problem with our government now. And the same thing goes with places all across the world. So I took an issue with that. But another big issue of mine is this, I mean, it's like these people are itching to go ahead and demolish the Idaho Four House before the trial, before anything. It's like, oh, we got to go ahead and knock this thing down right now. Why? Give me one good reason why. Why you have to demolish this home before the trial. Why? That does not sit right with me. Maybe investigators won't have to go back into this home. Maybe the jury won't need any evidence from this home. Maybe they don't need to look at this home. Maybe they won't need any further photos or anything. Maybe not. Maybe this home is will be totally unneeded when it comes to the trial. But better safe than sorry. Once you demolish this house, it is gone. It's not coming back. Yet, I guess the University of Idaho, they have a wild hair up their ass. And I mean, it's itchy. And they just, oh, we got to take this house down now. We got to destroy it now. Now we got to go ahead and take this thing down. Why? Why? I understand why they want to demolish it in the long run. I agree. Sure. I don't think people are going to want to live in the house. I don't know if anyone's going to want to buy the house. I understand that this could become a landmark that um, attracts people who you don't necessarily want attracting to your town. I also understand that this is close to the college campus and maybe college students go there for pranks and, and it's just an eyesore. I get it. I get wanting to tear this thing down. But why does it have to be torn down now? Why before the trial? I don't think it's hurting anyone. I think this home should stand until after Brian Koberger is found guilty. Once Brian Koberger is sentenced and he's away for the rest of his life, 
If he is guilty of doing this, then tear the thing down. But no, they have to do it now. And who does this affect? It affects the families of these victims. And who does this help? If this house gets torn down, who does this benefit right now? It benefits Brian Koberger and Brian Koberger's lawyer, who shouldn't even be his lawyer. That's who it helps. It helps Brian. It helps Brian's legal defense team. Now, let's imagine your home was the scene of a crime. And you're going to trial soon. And you decide, I'm going to tear down my home. Do you think they would be okay with that? Hell no. Hell no. Like I said, it's the double standards. It's okay when they do it. It's a problem when we do it. So we got Brian Koberger with the best legal defense team that money can't buy because it's free. Brian has the best free lawyer I've ever seen. I mean, Brian's free lawyer hired a team of investigators with your money. With your money. Isn't that crazy? Brian's lawyer, who he didn't have to pay a single red cent, hired a team of private investigators with your money to conduct their own investigation to try to find, you know, facts that can show that Brian's innocent. Public defenders do not do that for their clients that often. It does not happen. But there's a double standard in America. People with petty crimes are being treated like complete trash often, whereas killers are getting literally released onto the streets. They're getting light sentences. It's insane. It's ass backwards what's happening in this country. And this case is another example of that. So if you kill some, if you killed someone in your house, which I hope none of you all do that. But if you did, and then you went to court two weeks later, like, hey, I'm, I'm tearing down my house now. <laughs> like, that wouldn't be allowed to happen. But hey, whatever benefits Koberger, right? So the University of Idaho just wrote this lengthy letter to the families of the Idaho Four victims. I want you all to watch this clip, and then I'll be back with more thoughts. I'm just going to read this letter to you, word for word, without any editing. Okay, it begins this way. I am the acting general counsel for the University of Idaho and oversee the legal services for the university. I first want to express my condolences to each of you for the tragic loss that you've suffered. I greatly appreciate the positive manner in which you have interacted with the university in the aftermath of this tragedy. I am writing to communicate to each of you regarding the university's plans for the house at 1122 King Road. As was conveyed to you by Dean of Students, Blake Eccles, the homeowner gifted the house to the university with the intent by both parties that it be demolished. Before doing so, we will complete remediation within the house to address biohazards and chemical hazards that exist as a result of the crimes and ensuing investigation. At the completion of the remediation, we intend to have the remediation team gather any items of personal property that do not appear to be contaminated and transfer them to university personnel who will take these items to a secure off-site location for representative members of the families to review and recover items of your family members that you wish to keep. Items not selected will then be properly disposed of. This will not apply to large bulky items such as sofas, beds, or the like, to the extent that any remain on site. If you have specific items you wish to be on the lookout for, regardless of size, please let me know. If we can locate and retain them for you, we will. We intend to proceed with demolition as soon after completion of the remediation as can be done. We do not yet have a specific date for when this will occur. We will notify you of the demolition date in advance so you are not caught by surprise by media reports. In the interim, we are making every effort to respect the dignity of your loved ones and our activities will be done outside of media scrutiny as much as possible. 
The house is currently surrounded by construction fencing. The windows and doors have been securely boarded, and we are not allowing access into the house by anyone not specifically authorized by the university. Anyone authorized to enter the house will be required to agree to strict non-disclosure and will be prohibited from taking photographs or otherwise recording the inside. This communication constitutes the university's formal notice to you of our intention to proceed with remediation and demolition as described above. If you have any concerns with these plans, please contact me by April 3rd of 2023. We will address those prior to proceeding. If you have retained legal counsel, I encourage you to share this communication, notifying you of the proposed plans. You or your counsel may contact the Office of General Counsel via email, that's redacted, or call me at the phone number listed below, which I've redacted, to discuss any concerns or objections that you may have. Once again, I want to express my deepest sympathy and my condolences to each family member. It is my hope that the university's plan to remove the house helps you in your healing. A reply indicating you have received this email would be greatly appreciated. You know, if I was one of these parents, I wouldn't want this letter. I wouldn't want you all telling me your plans with what you're going to do with the home that my kid was murdered in. Don't write me some nice letter telling me how you're going to tear down the home that my kid was murdered in and it might affect the trial. It might affect the case moving forward. I don't want to read those words. That's how I would feel. You know, I understand that this property was given over to the school. I understand that these victims' families do not own the property. I get it. But come on, read the room here. You could at least make these families feel as if they have a voice in this decision. I think the majority of them, probably every last one of them, would not mind this house being destroyed in the long run. The problem is, they're so quickly trying to do this that it may cause problems in the case moving forward. Who's to say that they don't need to go comb over the house again for evidence, just to check? Who's to say that they want, they might want certain photos of certain angles of the home during the trial? Maybe the jurors will want to see the home and now they can't because they are dead set on tearing this thing down immediately. Immediately. And make no mistake about it, this is not just me voicing my concerns. The families of the victims have the same concern as I do. In fact, they're the ones that brought this stuff up. So they're worried right now. They're worried that this may affect the case. And like I said, to be perfectly clear, maybe it won't. Maybe it won't. But better safe than sorry. And in a situation like this, I think we should be doing whatever we can to support the families and to do kind of what the families think is best as opposed to as opposed to doing what is best for Brian Koberger. Because that's what this is. Whether directly or indirectly, this is best case scenario for Brian Koberger. And that is what has frustrated me throughout the duration of of this case ever since Brian Koberger got arrested because it seems like Brian Koberger is priority number one and not necessarily making sure that he's behind bars for the rest of his life, but his needs and his wants are all met while these families are grieving, worried to death now that this is going to affect their case moving forward while Brian gets to celebrate and live his life. It, it's insane, but that's the way this thing is going down. And it's all because we, not me necessarily, but we as people have stopped holding these other people to the same standards that we're held to. Let me know your thoughts about this, though, down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And remember, always remain opinionated.